God's Eternal Purpose by Gary Siegler Chapter 12 Romans 8, 29 and 30 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Quote, whom he foreknew, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. Unquote. So did he foreknow you? Is there any way he couldn't have foreknown you? This scripture is not for a select few. It really bothers me when I hear a message about a select few. Now, there is such a thing as what we call the first fruits. But see, that simply means that there are a group of people on this earth who are taking the time they need to nourish and to take in spiritual food and they will become ripe before the others. If you want to live a slothful, lazy, lackadaisical life, you can do that. And you can go to church every Sunday and hear nice messages and maybe feel a little bit of good. But you will never understand the words of Jesus. If you take the time to listen, within you is the voice that will guide you and it will never lie to you. I know when you are learning to listen to the voice, you make mistakes. There will be things that you'll think, this is really God telling me this, and you'll find out later it isn't. But that's okay, because the only thing that's really important is your heart. If you are seeking God, and you really want to do His will, and you think you are hearing right, and you make a mistake, that is okay, because we have to learn. Experience is always our best teacher. You can learn to discern that voice so clearly that you will do anything even though it seems foolish. Carol and I have left everything and moved to a place where we didn't know anybody. When we moved to Winston-Salem, we knew one person there. We didn't know how to get to the grocery store. We didn't know where to go shopping. Why would we do that? Because we started feeling that God wanted us to move. Something was going on. Something was moving within us that we needed to move. And I didn't say anything for a long time because I didn't know how Carol would react to moving again. However, I just kept getting stronger and stronger feelings we would be moving. I didn't want to leave Seattle. We said we would never leave Seattle. We love it there, and we still love it there. Our dearest friends are in Seattle. But I just felt so strongly we should move. One day, Carol said, I really feel we're supposed to move again. She was in full agreement because she had been feeling the same thing. I didn't know where we were supposed to move, but Carol said, I know where we are supposed to move. We are supposed to move to North Carolina. These things don't make sense. And I said to her, why in the world would you say North Carolina? You have never been there. That is the natural mind kicking in. We all have to deal with that. And you know what? Even if that had been a mistake, if we'd have moved to North Carolina and it had been a mistake, God would honor it just as much as if he did tell us to do it because it was in our hearts to do what was right. So don't fear missing God. The counselor, Holy Spirit, has been there all the time. All the wisdom of God has been in us all the time. Yet we still keep seeking it outside of ourselves, still keep trying to find the man who can minister to us, still keep trying to find the prophet to give us a word. 
We were known before we were born. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Romans 8.30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Not only were we foreknown, we were predestinated. I have shared many times over the years how a seed is predestinated to produce whatever it is. A seed of corn is predestinated to reproduce the corn kingdom. The seed of God, our true nature, which was planted in our earth, body, at birth, is predestinated to reproduce the life, nature, and character of God on this earth. However, as we came through the birth canal, we awoke in a physical dimension and forgot who we were and where we came from. When we are regenerated, a new conscious awareness is birthed in us, and we begin the ascension process of rising from a carnal, fleshy consciousness to a Christ consciousness. We then set out to find the right church where we can get the right spiritual nourishment to cause the seed in us to grow. What happens to most of us is we get into a religious environment where we are taught beliefs and doctrines that cause us to get into a performance-based Christianity, which puts us under the law of works, trying to justify ourselves by what we do rather than by what Christ has done. When you plant a seed in the ground, you would not think of teaching that seed how to grow. You know that as you plant it in good soil and water it, the heat from the sun will put pressure on the seed to break the outer shell so that the seed will come forth into maturity. Your outer man is the shell of the seed. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16 says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The pressures of life we go through will break the outer man and release the inner man, the seed, to come forth. Instead of teaching us how we should act and what we can and cannot do, we need to be taught the truth of our being. We are not sinners and never have been. We have done many wrong things, but that does not change the truth of our being. We are sons and daughters of God, and as we spend time focusing on the truth, we are transformed. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass mirror the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. As you meditate in the scriptures on the life of Jesus, you are looking into a mirror. That is who you are. The more you behold him, the more you will become like him. The more we meditate on the truth of being foreknown by God and predestinated to be his expression on the earth, the more we will be changed into his image. Let us rejoice knowing that we are beginning to truly live an abundant life as we focus on the truth. Cast down the negative thoughts and arise in the power of an endless life. Soon we are going to come into a great change in our world and see the kingdom be established all over the earth. Not only are we foreknown and predestinated, we are also called, justified, and glorified. Romans 8 verse 30. We are beginning to wake up to the truth of our being. In the beginning, God brought forth a son, and I never knew till just recent times that the son that he brought forth was a corporate son. 
and that we were all there in the beginning rejoicing as the sons of God, seeing what God was accomplishing and going to accomplish on the earth. Job 38, 7 says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Most of us have been caught up in religion. Our teachers did not know the truth, but they did the best they knew how. If they would have revealed to us the truth of our being, that we were literally sons of God, manifestations of our Father, and we incarnated in this physical realm to reveal and to manifest the glory of God in creation, we would have matured spiritually much sooner. Our first death was being lowered into this physical realm, Our first resurrection was the quickening of that consciousness of having another life in our being. We began to have a desire for righteousness and holiness, not knowing we already were righteous and holy. We tried to become what we already were in reality, but did not know it. We have been called. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 says, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This scripture tells us we were called and given all that we need to reproduce Christ on this earth, even before the world began. This calling is not because of our works, but by his purpose and his grace. This was all predestinated in the seed. When we have this revelation, we cease from our own works and enter into his rest. Hebrews 4 verse 3 says, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Hebrews 4.10 says, For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. This is the way to make our calling sure. We simply have a revelation that the works were finished, and we believe the truth of our being and we can rest in the finished work knowing that as we continue in the faith and seeking truth he that hath called us will finish the work in us hebrews 4 verse 6 says seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief Remember, we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world, called and predestinated to manifest the abundant life to the world. The people that believe this are the most peaceful and content people on the earth. God's eternal purpose is to incarnate in humanity and become a voice in the earth, to become a living expression of of love in the flesh. If we were taught that in the beginning of our spiritual walk, we would mature much faster. Most of us were taught to obey God through fear of being rejected by him and perhaps thrown into an eternal torture chamber. In 1969, soon after I was regenerated, I went to church and the pastor spoke on John 15 and put a fear in me. John 15 verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. At that time I had no idea how to abide in him. The preacher had the whole church trembling He said to abide in Christ was through obedience, and if we did not obey, we would be sent to hell and burn for all eternity. He further had an altar call to receive Jesus, telling us the same thing. 
God loves you and sent his son to save you. But if you do not come to the altar and say, Jesus, I receive you, you may die tonight and wake up in the eternal fire of God's wrath. Once you start trying to obey through fear, you lose sight of God's unconditional love and acceptance. Because before the law, all flesh stands guilty before God. The moment you try to obey the law in an outward way, you feel guilt because carnal man cannot keep the law. The law is holy, righteous, and good, but that law is not something we try to keep in an outward way by putting rules on a wall or in the state department or whatever. That is not the kind of law that we live by. The law that we live by is a life law of the Spirit of God that flows from the very depths of our being. So if a man abides not and he is cast forth as a branch, he is withered. Men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Let me tell you a religious story that I was told. God created man because he was lonely and he wanted fellowship. So he created man in his image. In the creation of man, he gave him a free will because God didn't want a bunch of robots. He wanted people who would willingly love and serve him. And that is why he gave you a free will so you could freely choose to serve him or not. But if you don't choose him, he has got a torture chamber set up for you. Didn't you all hear that religiously? He gave you a free will so you could choose to spend eternity in an agonizing endless torture chamber in fire that would literally burn your flesh and you would cry out in agonizing pain forever and ever. He gave you the free choice to do that. How can people really, really love and serve God if they believe that? I know that they can love God, but they do not know the intimate love of a father towards his children. I do know they can love God, but they don't know God. Can you love somebody you don't know? Oh, absolutely. Men and women love each other all the time and get married and then they get to know each other. It is not always a pleasant experience. David is a man who loved God with all his heart. In fact, the scriptures say that David was a man after God's own heart. But David was continually a man of war and destruction. He would stand and pray that God would kill his enemies. So David really didn't have a clear understanding of God. You can love God with all your heart and yet still not really know him. But when you really have an unveiling of his unconditional love, you then can put all of these kinds of verses that I've just read to you in a proper perspective because they are true. You see, if a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. Men gather them and cast them into the fire. Now we know that the fire is not a negative thing. It is a very positive thing. The very word fire comes from the word pur, P-U-R, which means purify. When I turn my back or I get into whatever I shouldn't get into, I've experienced the fire and so have you. But you know what I used to call the fire? I used to call it the devil. Oh, the devil is out to get me. No, he is not out to get you. You are just experiencing the fire. You are just reaping some of that flesh you've sown into for a while. That is all it is. The fire of God will burn up everything in your being that is not of the Spirit. The fire of God is a cleansing agent and will purify your being. Some folks get really upset when they hear that everyone will eventually be reconciled to our Father. However, when we really understand 
God's unconditional love and acceptance and understand his character, we see the scriptures in the true light. So many point out the Old Testament scriptures like Malachi 4, verse 1, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. If you really see God's unconditional love, you can go through all those Old Testament scriptures and you can rightly divide the word of truth because I guarantee you that all the wickedness in us will be burnt up. Everything in our being that is not according to his life and nature is going to go through the fire. That is why Paul instructed in 1 Corinthians verse 5, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. There is not a person on the face of this earth who is lost except between their ears. That is why we need to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. It is a fearful thing when you are going through the fire and some of the corrective judgments. But if you understand God's character and nature, it will help you to turn and repent and seek God to get you out of there. But if you think God is punishing you and he is angry with you, you don't really even have the strength or the faith to go to him to find the grace to help in time of need. Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it will be done to you. For herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. I was told to bear fruit. I had to go out and witness and win souls and get them born again. Remember what I shared about my shyness and being an introvert? The preacher was telling me that if I don't go out and win souls, I'm going to hell. He said if I did not get over my shyness a witness for Jesus, he would deny me before his father. I didn't know what to do because I thought, I can't do it. I can't go out and talk to people. Thank God we are getting to understand God as our father not one who is looking to punish us for our sins.